On a winter's night in June 1979, a fire swept through the ghost train at Sydney's Lunar Park. People were screaming because the car was on fire. That's all I wanted was to go in there and get them out. They're not what you call recognisable. Multiple witness accounts the day after the fire pointed to suspicious circumstances. The presence of a group of bikies and signs of arson. But the police officer in charge disregarded it all. That would be the worst instance as you could have of perverting the course of justice. Witnesses told the ABC about feeling bullied and harassed into changing their statements. If you don't change your statement, something's going to happen. While others were never called to the coronial inquest. I'd say you've got something wrong with the New South Wales police here. The cover-up afterwards was monumental. Tonight on 7.30, three new eyewitnesses come forward with information about what they saw at Luna Park that night. My name is Kerry Lawson and I was 18 and worked at Luna Park as a cashier during the Luna Park fire. Have you ever spoken publicly before? No, I have not. As a cashier, I was out the front of the park in the little boxes and we could see the crowds as they were coming forward. I saw four men dressed like bikies. What did you think when you saw those bikies? I thought it was unusual. It was not a place a bikie would frequent. If I asked you, I guess, out of 10, how sure you are that you saw bikies? 10 out of 10. She's now the eighth person to formally state they saw a suspicious group of bikies at Luna Park that night. Those bikies had been around different parts of the park during that night. Did you see them again? These yes. Bikes? What were they doing? Just sort of killing time. They weren't really interested in riding rides. They were just hanging around. After this second sighting of the bikies, fire broke out inside the ghost train. What happened next has troubled Kerry Lawson for 42 years. Were you contacted by police? Never. And I was in the next day. I was upset that I wasn't interviewed. I did have things to say. They were not interested in following up. Do you think the police have questions to answer? Yes, they do. Why? Why weren't we called? You could have done it then and there on the spot. Everything was available. My name is Cathy Dewar and at the time of the Lunar Park fire, I was a student and worked there for a number of years. Cathy Dewar was 24, working a weekend shift on the night of the fire. I was doing my shift on the chip bar that night. I do remember seeing um, a group of bikies. I distinctly remember this group because they walked around the side of the chip bar and past the front. I remember one of them turning around, sort of smirking, and they were laughing. These were young guys who were thin, um, leather boots, long hair. They just looked kind of um, a bit out of place at Luna Park. It was very unusual to see a group like that at the park. Just like Kerry Lawson, Kathy Dewar was never contacted or interviewed by police, nor were they included at the 1979 coronial inquest. What would you have told the inquest? I would have told them what I saw that night. I would have told them how I'd seen the same people on a repeated basis. And I would have told them I believed it was deliberately lit. For me, there were actually two tragedies there was the fire itself, and the second tragedy for me was the failed investigation. There was so much buried, so many facts distorted and hidden. Four decades on, both Kerry Lawson and Kathy Dewar are still waiting to be contacted by police, still waiting to have their statements taken. Are you willing to give a police statement? Yes. I am definitely prepared at this point in my life to give a 
statement to the police and I really resent the fact that I was not given the opportunity to do that at the time. My name's Richard Visser. I was at uh, Luna Park the night of the ghost train fire on the 9th of June, 1979. 19-year-old Richard Visser had gone to Luna Park for a night out with his girlfriend. We were going there for a happy night out, of course, and we went into the ghost train at the beginning of the night. But later that night, during a second ride of the ghost train, something was amiss. Ghost train! We decided to have a second go in the ghost train. And as we were in there, I could distinctly smell the, the kerosene burning, absolutely. I smelt burning kerosene. Richard Visser is now the third person to tell the ABC they smelt kerosene, an accelerant inside the ghost train late that night. He joins witnesses Greg Chard and Frank Boitano, who also say they smelled kerosene at the origin area of the blaze. If I asked you, out of 10, how confident are you that you smelt burning kerosene inside the ghost train late that night? 12, there's no, no doubt about it. The presence of kerosene, that smell that you're 12 out of 10 confident of, I mean, what did that point to in terms of how that fire started? Oh, it suggests that somebody lit the fire. But the police never obtained a statement from Richard Visser, and he was never called at the coronial inquest. When we heard the news report the next morning that it was an electrical fault, that was the interview that we heard. Um, Doug Knight, I think it was. We're now satisfied that the fire was as a result of an electrical fault within the building. You just believe the police because the police are law-abiding people. But as the ABC's exposed documentary series revealed, Doug Knight, the officer in charge of the Luna Park fire investigation, was highly corrupt, known as a fixer, who accepted bribes to thwart and manipulate investigations on behalf of criminals. To this day, New South Wales Police still has not publicly corrected its electrical fault claim, it still has not accounted for suppressing evidence of arson and suspicious circumstances. And it still has not apologised to the families of the victims for its defective investigation. Do you think justice has been done here? No. Not at all. I, I think it's just all wrong. Richard Visser, Kerry Lawson and Cathy Dewar are all calling on the New South Wales Government to act to establish an inquiry into the conduct of New South Wales Police. These were people who were in positions of authority and trust, and they abused those positions. That, to me, is really the biggest crime of all. In a statement to 7.30, New South Wales Police said its unsolved homicide team is reviewing the origin of the Luna Park fire and the circumstances surrounding the deaths of those seven people. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.